Hello people of YouTube, my name's Dane and today I am going to be reviewing this absolute beast which is Outlandish Night, The Byzantine Life of Stephen Runciman by Minu Dinshaw. Now if you don't know who Stephen Runciman is, bear with me. I guess in many ways that's kind of the point. First off, why am I reading this massive book? Well, I will link to a video below that explains that a little bit more. But basically, I'm sitting on a shadow panel with four other book bloggers for the uh, Sunday Times and Peter's Phrases and Dunlop Young Writer of the Year Award in association with the University of Warwick. Basically, we each get sent all five books that are in the shortlist. We get to read and review them all. Then we meet up as a team. We decide our winner. Then the overall winner it gets decided and it's lovely and as part of that we were sent this book so this is the only non-fiction book in this year's lineup and it's also actually the only book written by a male so I guess the first thing to mention here is obviously that it's massive so actually the uh, the book is 640 pages long if you don't read so all of these bits here these are all the notes and the citations and that kind of stuff but even without that it's that thick and uh, I mean, it's pretty small font, and it is very uh, dense. Now, I know a lot of people at the moment are doing non-fiction November, and this is a non-fiction book. And it's really interesting, really, because basically, from what I understand, uh, Minu Dinshaw met Stephen Runciman in Stephen Runciman's old age and was fascinated by him and wanted to kind of delve a little bit deeper. I should explain this now as well. Who was Stephen Runciman? He was a knight. He was a Sir Stephen Runciman. He was the Laird of Eag or Egg, I don't know what how to pronounce that, which is a small Scottish island which is uh, family owned. So you'll notice the byline is the Byzantine life of Stephen Runciman. So uh, the Byzantine there refers to, this is where I get it all wrong because I'm not great at this part of history, but it's a certain part of the Roman Empire, so I believe it's kind of the eastern part of it, which was over towards Turkey and Greece and stuff, I don't know. He spent some time in Greece anyway. And basically Stephen Runciman was a historian and so he wrote a bunch of books, but he was also kind of, what I've said in my discussions of it and my review of it is that he's kind of like one of the late examples of just the English gentleman, you know, the, the one of the old boys who moved around in the old boys club. I mean, he kind of knew a lot of people. He went to Eton. He, uh, he was a student, Eton, was it Eton? He was a student anyway with George Orwell. I can't remember whether that was at Eton or maybe at Cambridge. But he was a student with George Orwell. He knew Elizabeth Bowers Lyon, who was the Queen Mother. He knew he knew a lot of European royalty as well, and part of that was because his by his very nature he was an historian, but he focused on uh, bi like Byzantine studies. Let me get Byzantine on the screen. Relating to Byzantium, yeah, I got that. Or the Eastern, or the, or the, or the, or the, or the, or the, yes. The Eastern Roman Empire. So I was pretty much right. The capital used to be Constantinople. I mean, he spent a lot of time in Istanbul, in Greece. He actually has a, a street named after him in Greece. It's very, it's very strange because I would never normally pick up a book like this. I, if I read a biography or an autobiography, it'll be, uh, for example, let me go and get a few biographies that I like to read. Ha ha! I'm back. Well, I, I really like non-fiction, but I generally don't really read memoirs or autobiographies. And when I do, I've picked up just at random, I guess, some of the autobiographies and memoirs on my shelves. So we've obviously got Chronicles by Bob Dylan. So I've read that. I've got here Dynamo, Nothing is Impossible. I think this is even a signed copy. It's got a little signed Dynamo plate in it. I've got two Gordon Ramsay autobiographies from charity shops. And I've got The Rock Says, which this was The Rock's autobiography before The Rock was Dwayne Johnson. He was still The Rock. It's published as The Rock. I kind of, I want to write about this. I might even do a video about it because I find it really interesting that The Rock's autobiography, it actually focuses on like his, uh, he used to be an American footballer before becoming a wrestler because this was written when he was a wrestler. So that's all he had to go back to. Whereas if he published one now, He'd talk about his films and then be like, back when I was a wrestler. Another non-fiction book I literally have within arm's reach, I've just finished reading it, is How to Tell If Your Cat Is Planning to Kill You. Plotting to Kill You. Sorry, I can't read. So, Outlandish Night, The Byzantine Life of Stephen Runciman, is definitely the kind of book I wouldn't necessarily read normally. 
I was even thinking when I was reading it, every page I was like, I could be reading on writing by Stephen King. I could be reading on writing by Stephen King. I could be reading on writing by Stephen King. But no, I was learning about Stephen Runciman, which actually, I'm glad, I feel like, I feel accomplished after reading it. And it was very enjoyable. It was definitely incredibly well written and well researched, but to a certain extent, I kind of almost wonder if it was a little bit misapplied and that short like Stephen Runciman was a very interesting character and it's great to kind of preserve his memory but it could have been anyone and you've gone for Stephen Runciman I actually I, I talked about this with my uh, the people from my spoken word night and I asked uh, ev and everyone to put their hands up if they'd heard of Stephen Runciman and nobody had despite that I mean he did have a very distinguished career and he wrote a bunch of um, historically relevant books on the Byzantine Empire but you know, one of the things I found interesting online, somebody said they found it alien to be interested in somebody because of the people they knew. And that's very much the case here. It's constantly kind of referring to him meeting various different people. One of them actually was Arthur Whaley, who is a, um, he's long dead now, but he was a, a translator. He translated Chinese poetry into English. And I've read one of his books and, um, the, the book I've got is one of those, you know, when you get a really, really old book that's kind of age-worn. Let me get this book. So Stephen Runciman knew a guy called Arthur Whaley, and this is the Arthur Whaley book that I've got. And you can see it's one of these properly old-school, um, really old prints. This was published in London in 1949. And um, by then, by 1949, Stephen Runciman was in his 40s as well. And actually, I highly recommend this book if you get a chance. And... Uh, don't ever get rid of the old books that are 50, 60 years old. Send them to me because I love them. One of the other things about this book is it does come with photographs. So you do get to see some photographs. It's just that there aren't many of the photographs. Actually, I, I, I feel as though there's only photographs in this because people put photographs in celebrity autobiographies. I mean, it's nice to see Stephen Runciman and his, you know, where he was and... You know, here he is in 1976, for example, but it's not really necessary. It's actually more interesting to read about him. Another thing that the author does is at the start of each of the chapters, there'll be a, a quote from a book. Here we go. Arthur Waite, The Key to the Tarot. And it's kind of just used as a device to bring all the different chapters together. There's no other reason for it than that. So one of the things about this book is that there are footnotes footnotes galore there are sometimes like three four different footnotes and footnotes within footnotes and it reminds me of this Noel Coward quote which is having to read footnotes resembles having to go downstairs to answer the door in the middle of making love it really does put you off while you're reading the book and you've just turned over a page and then you have to go back to the previous page and read the footnote and I mean they do add information but I would argue in most cases where there are footnotes in this you could have just written it to the main text especially when it's already 640 pages long. All in all though I did enjoy reading this and I haven't written up my review yet so I don't know the exact score I'm going to give it so I guess we're about to find out. What I would say is I can't think of a single person I would recommend this to not because it's a bad book but because to me it's so niche and so specialist and for something like this I mean I've read it for the young writer of the year award maybe if it was the young biographer of the year award you could see it winning but it's just not relatable enough it's um, you know it's a great little snapshot in history and I'm kind of glad that it does exist and I'm glad that I have read it but would I recommend it over suggesting somebody just got a Cassandra Clare book? No, go and get the Cassandra Clare book. She's pretty good. I've only read the first book, but I do plan to read more. Let's get to the rating. So here we go. I'm going to give Outlandish Night, The Byzantine Life of Stephen Runciman by Minu Dinshaw. I'm going to give it a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5. It was, um, yeah, it was good. It was very professionally, very well done. But I am going to have to hold it back by the fact that it wasn't necessarily everyone's cup of tea. It wasn't necessarily my cup of tea. And while Stephen Runciman was a very interesting character, for example, I uh, referenced that Noel Coward quote. I think I'd rather have read a biography of Noel Coward. So pretty much, pretty much, uh, pretty much that. However, it does look beautiful. And even on the inside, you've got these little sort of tarot things. And also I love Minu's uh, biography here on the inside cover. Minu Dinshaw lives in London and this is his first book. And I mean this is from Alan Lane Publishing which is an imprint of Penguin. So it's a pretty reputable publisher. 
if you were just to judge it on the purely on the writing alone and the research that's gone into it, this one will probably win. But um, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't vote this one above the others, which I'll be reviewing soon. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know what you think with a comment. Let me know if you've ever heard of Stephen Runciman and or if you knew what the word Byzantine meant before you watched this video. And actually, let me know if you know what the word Byzantine means now that you've watched this video, whether this cleared it up for you at all. And I'll be back soon with another book review. So see you later.